following is a presentation of HBO Sports. Looking forward to that and some of the great fights that will unfold in 2009. And you'll see Robert Guerrero and Victor Ortiz on HBO's Boxing After Dark on March the 7th. Now, just a short time ago on our HBO Boxing calendar, I talked about the February 17th premiere of the next Real Sports, and we talked about minor leaguer Robbie Tolan, who was shot. Unfortunately, he was not, as I mentioned, tragically shot. Fortunately, uh, Robbie Tolan and his story will be told. Robbie Tolan obviously surviving that shooting, so I express my apologies to the family of Robbie Tolan. But uh, we are getting set for more boxing action here from Sunrise, Florida, as we get a look at our next bout of the evening in the 154-pound weight class as Sergio Martinez has won 28 fights in a row. He's 33 years of age. He'll turn 34 next week. He's got 44 wins and 24 knockouts on his resume. He's done some modeling for Adidas, and he is a guy that everybody is talking about in the 154-pound weight class as someone who can really make a mark. He'll be taking on Kermit Cintron, who is a former belt holder in the welterweight division, now moving up to 154 pounds for this fight. The common denominator between these two, the one loss from Martinez and the two losses to Cintron, both came at the hands of Antonio Margarita. We'll talk more about that in just a bit as well. But now let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Sergio Martinez and Kermit Cintron. Martinez, I mentioned at 33 years of age, slight height advantage for Cintron. Martinez weighted at 135, 153 and a quarter pounds. Cintron right at 154. On our unofficial scales, Martinez is rehydrated to 164 pounds, as has Cintron. Time for the rules with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Sergio Martinez, Kermit Cintron fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell on any round, including the 12th and final round. Bob! All right, time for the formal introductions once again to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Bank Atlantic Center, Sunrise, Florida, the action continues courtesy of Don King Productions in association with Rothstein Rosenfeld Adler Attorneys at Law, sponsored by V. Giorgio Vodka, the Bova Restaurant Group, Renato Watches, and Q Task. This bout presented by DeBella Entertainment. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest Tommy Kazmarek, Jed O'Connor, and Peter Tremetera, and inside the ring, referee in charge of the action, Frank Santore. And now, 12 rounds of boxing in the super welterweight division. On the line, the interim world title. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with red and blue, officially weighing 154 pounds. Professional record, 30 victories, including 27 knockouts with two defeats from Reading, Pennsylvania. The former welterweight champion of the world, Kermit, the killer syndrome. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue official weight, 153 and one quarter pounds. Professional record, 44 victories, including 24 knockouts, only one defeat and one draw. From Quilmes, Argentina, the defending WBC, Interim Super Welterweight World Champion Sergio Maravilla Martinez. Yes, 
sit drop. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Hey, my thing is. Let's go, guys. All right, guys, we've gone over everything in the dress room. Your trunks are both here. Yours are just a little hot, all right? So let's keep the fight clean. Remember, I want to watch, watch rabbit punch. Watch behind the head shots, all right? No punch behind the head. If you're not going to put it down, go to the corner and stay there. Don't stand over, all right? Questions, questions. Good luck, guys. Sergio Martinez and his team believe that Martinez is the goods. So much so, they claim to be willing to fight anyone 154 pounds or below in all of boxing. Maybe Cintron is evidence of this. A fast and hard-hitting fighter at 147 pounds, not the kind of fighter you want, you, you would, you want to fight unless you have to. Martinez fought on October the 4th. Stoppage of Alex Bunima in the eighth round. Cintron on November the 15th, 12 round decision against Lovemore and Dew. Cintron said, hey look, Bunima made Martinez look like a god. He stood right in front of him. We've worked on our combinations. He's in a second fight with trainer Ronnie Shields, an accomplished trainer Lennox. Can you change a guy at 29 years of age? Well, it's difficult to, but if he wants to change, he definitely will change. But like I said, you know, he's been working on a lot of stuff. And let's see if it comes out in the fight. Cintron is very athletic. I was a wrestler in college. Played a lot of different sports. Martinez yeah, head, says, Mike, though, yeah, Stop, but guess break. what? Get I'm going to be quicker than him, faster than him, because of mind speed. He said mind speed is the key. No, the, the question in boxing is Martinez looked so good last time out here on Boxing After Dark against Alex Bunima. The question was, was Bunima completely break. shot? Break. That's how good Martinez looked. We should get some answers right now, because Cintron is still physically in his prime. When Martinez says mind speed, I think it's the reaction time he's talking about. You know, whether he's able to react and he feels that he's able, he's able to react faster and quicker than Citron. One of the other things that Citron has added to his stop, stop, team is Brian Caldwell for strength and conditioning. And he said the key was Kermit just didn't have the ability to duplicate his power throughout the fight that uh, when Ronnie Shields first got him. He couldn't go two minutes on the bag before he was gassed. They feel that they have added that. He'll run six miles in the morning, then go right to a pool and swim for an hour. Right now, you know, they're not doing too much. Citron really should be throwing the jab because he's the longer and leaner of the two. None of them is really a, adopted a jab yet. And, you know, the first one that does will start scoring a lot more points. Well, so far it does look like Martinez is huge advantage in speed against most fighters has been somewhat neutralized against the pretty quick Kermit Cintron. And obviously this is a check checkout round for both of them not knowing each other so they're seeing what each other can do at this at this point. I'm sure the second round is going to be a lot more punches involved. Martinez in the blue. Shoots a left hand. Cintron tries to counter off that. Final 13 seconds of round number one, as Lennox pointed out, kind of a feeling out round. As I mentioned, these two have a combined three losses. Martinez, in his 18th bout as a pro, lost to Antonio Margarito, stopped in the seventh round. Kermit Cintron. His two losses came to Antonio Margarito in 2005 and 2008. Now, earlier this week, the California State Athletic Commission revoked the licenses of Antonio Margarito and trainer Javier Capitillo, banning both for a minimum of one year for putting a plaster-like substance inside Margarito's hand wraps before his fight against Shane Mosley on January the 24th at the Staples Center. Both can reapply to be licensed after one year. Lennox Lewis, you're a Hall of Famer, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. First of all, what's your take about what Margarito did as a fighter? And secondly, do you believe the fact that he said he didn't know what was happening? It's basically a disgrace. I thought biting was bad, but this actually going in the ring with some something, it's basically going in the ring with brass knuckles in your, in your gloves. And, you know, that's criminal. You could really hurt a guy. You could take somebody's life. And I'm sure when he comes back, everybody's going to be looking uh, for him to knock him out because he's definitely going to have a bullseye on his back. Did you buy the fact that he didn't know? 
No, he knew, you know, and even if he didn't know, he would have to know because if you're walking around with those type of things in your hand, they're obviously a crutch for you. They're going to help you. And he was happy the fact that he was winning all these fights with this help. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, how unless this is the first time he's ever cheated, uh, the time he gets caught, which is hard to believe, um, it's amazing how without that advantage, it was not his opponent who broke down over the second half of the fight. And with plenty of snap on his punches still over the second half of the fight, Mosley was able to break down Margarito. It was Margarito who, without that advantage, crumbled late in the fight. And, you know, you look at Kermit Cintron as an example. His only two losses to Margarito. After both stop, fights, stop. he said break, he had break. never been hit like that before, especially after the loss last year, last April. He said, I've never felt that kind of power against me. And look what it's done in his career. Here is a guy that was a title holder at 147, is now fighting at 154 because he got moved to the back of the line with now at least we can look at it as losses that have to come into question. He feels Cintron like he's an undefeated fighter, understandably. He feels that he's never been bested, it seems, um, in a fair fight. Sergio Martinez, on the other hand, admits that Margarito break, just rolled break. him. That it was oh, early break. in Martinez's career. Martinez was quick to say, I don't think it had anything to do with cheating, his beating me. He just beat me up. Yeah, remember that but was Mar that was Margarito years ago. And that was Martinez's 18th fight and his first fight ever outside of Argentina. But Cintron, it hurt his career. It damaged his standing in the sport. And um, while he may say he considers himself undefeated, the fact is he was badly physically beaten in two fights. Cintron looking a bit slow right now and sluggish. I think he's trying to set up that right hand, but you know he needs to throw that hook as well, throw a different array of punches and really mix it up. What should he be doing against the Southpaw Martinez? Stop. Well, throwing that right hand and coming back with a left hand. Stop. You know, ending his combination with his left hand instead of his right hand. So he right there, right hand. He, he threw a left right with a left. And that's only going to be effective, of course, if Cintron can establish that left foot outside of Martinez's right foot. The battle of position in the lead no, foot feet no. when a... Uh, an orthodox Stop. fighter Break. fights a southpaw Break. will determine who's able to land that power punch effectively. The straight right hand from this orthodox fighter, left hand from the southpaw. Martinez a little short with that left. One of the things that the Cintron camp talked about was trying to make Martinez feel uncomfortable. In we Let have go. to be first. Crowd him. Stop. Right now Cintron's Stop. crowding him, but he's not doing anything. He's allowing himself to get tied up. Actually, Citron was holding a little bit there. The referee did right, stop, 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 break, break. End of round number two in the scheduled 12 rounder between Kermit Cintron and Sergio Martinez. About 15 years ago, figure skater Tanya Harding burst into the public consciousness as a result of her role in an attack on rival Nancy Kerrigan. On the next Real Sports, we catch up with Harding and take a look at what her life's become. And February the 23rd, it's the premiere of A Battle for Tobacco Road, Duke versus North Carolina. A one-hour documentary going inside the fiercest robbery in college basketball between two schools separated by just eight miles. I had a chance to see it already. It is phenomenal. If you love college hoops and that robbery, you don't want to miss it February the 23rd. Keep working that jab and let him come in. The fight is long. Touch him, touch him, touch him, let him come in. One hand to the body, one hand to the top. So we begin round number three in this scheduled 12 round bout. Not a lot so far. Lennox, at what point does the feeling out process end and you start somebody taking control of this? Well, this is the point. Somebody needs to take control. Right now, you know, to me, it looks like they have a clash of styles. They're both talented, but until somebody really takes the lead, you know, we're not going to see the difference in this fight. So far, without a shop-worn 30-something in front of him, as Martinez had last time out, now it's Dunima, he does not look like the same kind of scintillating star. No, I mean, Ma Martinez can definitely land the jab, but he's not doing so. And he needs to step into his punches and really get his jab in there to score some points. And then he can come with his left hand. 
but he's staying on the outside. He's not really making that step in and putting himself in boxing position where he can actually uh, throw some punches. But what he's doing really go. good, he's go, catching Citron, Citron on punch. the way in. So go. he's kind of committing himself and then drawing back. And when Citron comes in, he's, he's catching him with that right jab. And Citron trying to land that right hand. Martinez ducking away from it. And Martinez is, is, is really trying to make Citron commit himself. But he has to take advantage of it. A couple of times you've seen Martinez try to land combinations on the inside using his hand speed, but he's maybe properly respectful of Cintron's power and athleticism. Citron to me is very flat-footed and needs to move his feet a lot quicker, especially forward, especially when he's throwing the jab. Oh, there go. Not a lot of rhythm to this fight so no. far. Again, they get tangled, and both have done some holding. Martinez misses with that three-punch combination. Got a piece of Cintron, but nothing telling. You know, it's funny. The Cintron camp said that we need to make Martinez uncomfortable. It looks like Martinez, to this point, has made Cintron uncomfortable. Martinez reaching in with the left hand that caught Cintron. When, when Martinez comes in, Cintron really just plants his feet and ducks his head, which is the wrong thing to do. He should really move his back foot back and take a step back and make Martinez commit himself. Therefore, he's throwing a combination after that and counter punching. Feet got tangled for a second. You saw Martinez slightly got balanced again, clinch to end the round. Still to come in our main event, 36-year-old Nate Campbell from Jacksonville, Florida, did not make the 135-pound weight limit, so he has lost his two title belts. He will be fighting, though, tonight to try to get win number 33 on his resume. He'll be taking on Ali Funiga. He hails from East London, South Africa. If Funiga wins, he does take the two belts held by Nate Campbell, actually three belts that were once property of Nate Campbell. His nickname Rush Hour for early knockouts stands six foot one. How will Campbell deal with the size disadvantage? That's coming up in our main event. Campbell, Funiga, here on Boxing After Dark. Well, Sergio Martinez and Kermit Cintron really have not done a whole lot to distinguish themselves here through the first three rounds. That kind of weird rounds to score. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Howard Letterman. Okay, Bob, I've got a two rounds to one. 29, 28, Kermit Cintron. Bob, in rounds one and two, Sergio Martinez did very, very little. In round three, he got into his rhythm and completely outboxed Kermit Cintron. So I thought Kermit grabbed the first two rounds, Martinez grabbed the third. I gotta tell you something, Max mentioned something very interesting about, you know, uh, Sergio Martinez being inside of Kermit Cintron's lead left foot. Sergio Martinez circles the wrong way. I mean, a southpaw goes to the right to get outside of the lead foot. This guy goes to the left, Sergio Martinez, and he's always inside. But in the meantime, in the third round, even though he's going the wrong way, he's going to his left, he outboxed Cintron. Two to one, Martinez. Oh, Cintron. All right. And the main thing is not getting hit when he goes to his left. Yeah, Cintron threw a left hand there, but the defensive Martinez blocked it. See a southpaw fighter, as Harold mentions, moving to his left, has to set his feet to get anything on his punches. In addition to the tactical disadvantage of the power punch, the back punch, the straight left hand, not being in as good position as if he were to move to the right, he also has to set his feet to land hard shots rather than being able to snap those off on his toes. See, Citron did something which he's supposed to be doing, shuffle ahead and throw that double jab instead of standing in one spot. That's what he needs to do. Shuffle in the head, throwing that double jab, and throwing his combinations break. after that. Let's see if he follows that recipe to try to unlock something here. Neither guy has really been very effective. See, one thing that Citron does, anytime he's on the defense is 
he puts his head down. Good boxers come in and they throw a combination, realizing realizing the guy's going to be throwing, uh, keeping his head down, and you know the upper cups are going to be coming out. You know, on paper, this matchup in a good triple header seemed the most intriguing. You know, maybe there wasn't as much on the line in the division in a certain way as Nate Campbell's fight with Funega, but Funega is not very well known, even in South Africa, let alone in this country. And um, Nate Campbell, while he held belts, is not the lineal champ of the division. Here, you have a really interesting matchup between two athletic fighters, and now it's starting to deliver. Until yeah. now, it hasn't. A right hand by Martinez, then he follows it up with a left snap back the head of Cintron. But Martinez looked like such a comer in the division after the Bunima fight. And in light of the Margarito scandal, Cintron is, is, is revitalized in a way, his career status. And yet uh, their styles, except for a brief flurry here, have not meshed well. Okay, now listen. You gotta keep making the fight though, okay? You gotta keep doing what you're doing, making the fight. Now look, that was a lot better round, okay? He, was, he threw more punches that round. But look, just, you gotta rough his ass up now, okay? You gotta rough the guy up. When you're the inside, pull both hands down and just start punching, okay? Put your head. Huh? I feel too close. I feel like he's punched. No, I want to. Be explosive, explosive. Come out fast, all right? Okay, we're good. Come on. Keep going. Work that jab. Get, you got your range now. Relax. You got your range. Now get your hands loose. You know you're comfortable. Yeah. Come on. It's fifth. Yes, sir. So good set for the start of round number five with Sergio Martinez and Kermit Sintron scheduled for 12. Martinez with 44 wins and 24 knockouts. Sintron 30 and 2 with 27 knockouts. The two most telling punches in the last round connected by Martinez. A right and then a left in the final minute of the round. What do you think about what Ronnie Shields said to Cintron, Lennox, about getting get in there, rough him up a little bit? And the reason Ronnie's saying that to him, because he wants him to do something. And he's not doing anything right now, but waiting and standing uh, stand in, in the middle right. of the ring. Cut right. over Cintron's right. eye from a uh, straight uh, left hand from Martinez. See, this is what Cintron can't afford. He can't afford to, for Ma Martinez to be on the outside and scoring these little shots. Cintron's looking to knock him out, but he needs to he needs to set up the knockout. And you see Cintron keeps looking and wiping at that blood. It's HBO's Boxing After Dark from Sunrise, Florida. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman. So glad you can join us. And our main event, Nate Campbell, squares off against Ali Funiga. As Campbell has lost his lightweight belts on the scale earlier tonight, Alfredo Angulo stopping Cosme Rivera in the fifth round. You know, Ronnie Shields may say to Cintron, rough him up on the inside because class tells over time. Early, it was not clear who was the better fighter. As the rounds progress, you can see Martinez's class showing and starting to dictate the fight. And when you hear from a corner, get in there and rough him up. In other words, don't make it so much of a boxing match. I think that's an acknowledgement of that corner, you know, uh, uh, of, of what I just discussed. When, when you're flat-footed like Citron, and you have Martinez dancing around you, he can pick and choose when he wants to work. And especially when he's dancing around, he's not getting hit. He can come in and hit Citron when he, when he wants to. Citron not doing what Lennox suggested as far as shuffling in and doubling up with a good jab. It's sort of one, it's kind of languishing. And what he's, do, what he's not doing, he's not cutting off the ring. He needs to cut off the ring and move forward. He needs to make Martinez move a lot quicker and, and, and feel the pressure Break, of Citron. No Step back. The one jab is not going to do it from Citron. He needs to throw double jab combinations and try to put him against the ropes. You know, he's, not win he's definitely not winning this fight in the middle of the ring. And right now, the one objective that Citron has not been able to accomplish is make Martinez feel uncomfortable. It's Citron that looks uncomfortable. And Citron's a rough guy, so he wants that roughness to come out and, 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 and be telling in this, in this round, especially in the fight. 
Martinez missed with that left and right hand over the top. Sticks out a right hand to end round number five. How are you feeling? Sergio, listen, he's got to work. Work with speed. Watch. 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 Don't crash with him. Well, you have the opportunity to clash, like you did. Get on the outside, change the angle, and move on to the right. Come on, because you're, you're off. You're in a bad spot, and then you throw. Alessio, look. Look. I don't want this fucking guy coming forward. You understand? I want you to back his ass up. Now, look. You started out good again. But look, you got to keep banging both hands, OK? And we can't be close. And here we're going to take a look and see how Citron got this cut. I didn't see a punch. It was a punch. It was, it was, a, it punch. was a punch. But, uh, the referee has just told me that it was an accidental clash of heads. Incor I could see that as it happened. That that's an incorrect call, although you could see why the referee would think that, because after the punch, their heads came towards each other but missed each other in a way that Southpaw and Orthodox fighters frequently have clashes of heads. So, Max, should they bring in the replay? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> We, we, we've had it twice tonight where it's pretty it, within one minute the NFL would kill for that kind of timeliness uh, within one minute we've shown you two great replays from our crew that clearly show where cuts occurred uh, in round number five a high in the fight Martinez landed 14 punches it has not been a blistering pace but it's been ruled a clash of heads so again if this fight gets stopped because of that cut if it worsens they'll go to the scorecards rather than Martinez winning by TKO which punch break, break. caused the cut it, and it's a great example of why replay would be good because the mistake by the referee was totally understandable it was a, a call many many would miss and we have luxury super slow-mo and, and also maybe a better angle when it originally occurred Referee can't be all around the fighters at once. You can only see it from one angle. Citron making no attempt to set any traps for Martinez. He's just happy to watch him dance around and try and catch him on the way in, which is a mistake. Although it took Martinez three or four rounds to put Citron in that frame of mind, I think. You know, the other thing, too, is, you know, Kermit and his wife, Maria, just welcomed their new son, Clemente, seven months ago. They have uh, Savannah and Denali, ages six and two. You know, again, when you look at the ramifications of what happened against Margarito, he's fighting at 154. He was a belt holder at 147. He lost that belt last year. You know, they turned down less money to stay at 147 because he wants to support his family and his three kids and new baby. So he takes this fight. That's more of the fallout of what happened against Margarita last year. Absolutely. He's forced to take on the, one of the hottest fighters in boxing, a bigger uh, man than he, a faster fighter than he is, uh, for less money than he would have otherwise been able to command for staying at welterweight and fighting in the deepest and most glamorous division currently in boxing. That, if, you know, is a direct result of the two losses to Margarito, which now look dubious. And especially last year, he lost his belt. Combination from Martinez. Cintron backing away. We have not seen that combinations, the flow that they talked about. Yeah, Citron's pouring right now with his left hand when and his feet is still in one position. He's not looking to move forward. Trying to set Martinez. You know, Martinez is in and out. He's like a bunny rabbit. Remember, Centron cut in round number five, just not able to get any kind of rhythm okay, so far. Listen, Herman, now look, all these fucking rounds are close, you understand? I don't know how these fucking judges are judging their fight, man. You understand? No. All you gotta do is pick up the fucking piece on this guy, man. That's all you fucking gotta do is get to the man. HBO's Boxing After Dark from Sunrise, Florida. Now listen, I need you to get out there and fucking jump on top of the man, okay? Crush yourself. Vamos, hombre. The guy don't like pressure. 
So as we get set for the start of round number seven for Kermit Cintron and Sergio Martinez, it's about a schedule for 12. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Howard Lennon. Okay, Bob, I've got it four rounds to two, 58-56, Sergio Martinez. You know, Bob, it kills me that Ronnie Shields in the corner doesn't say to Kermit Cintron, for God's sake, take a step to the side and cut the ring off. I mean, Martinez can circle it to the left. All you got to do is take a step to the side and whack the guy. In the meantime, it's turned into a sticking fight because Kermit Cintron standing in the middle of the ring doing nothing and getting out boxed four rounds in a row by Sergio Martinez who's circling the wrong way. Four to two, Martinez. And slipping fast with the way it's going for Cintron right now. You know, I think this is a, it, it also a reflection of what's happening in this fight of Mart what you mentioned Martinez said yesterday, Bob. His, his mind speed. He is able to play this kind of speed chess better than most. It's not just the physical reflexes because Cintron is might be a physical match for him, but it's his ability to think and start to control the action and impose his style that has made the difference so far tonight. And Martinez is more than happy to kind of have this fight continue this way, as, as Harold illustrated in his scorecard. Last four rounds, Martinez. Well, you know, one thing about Cintron, he's got a good, powerful right hand and. If he elects to throw that, and if that's ever on target, you know, things could change at any given moment. Four of his 27 knockouts have happened after round number seven. Talking about Sintron. His latest late knockout came in 2007 against Jesse Feliciano. He stopped him in the 10th round. Well, they certainly have not made Martinez, or he has. Martinez uncomfortable. Sergio Martinez looks very relaxed right now with the way this is going. You know, if I was boxing Martinez, I would go after him and, and make him put his hands up. Right now, the fact that he's got his hands down, he's very relaxed in there and he feels comfortable. Well, let him go. Let him go. Slot low, slot low, Martinez. Slot low. Stop. Stop. Break. Well, there's a there's a, a, a kind of an acquiescence in the way Cintron is fighting. Not that he's not still fighting, but he seemed to have abandoned his game plan in the face of a technically superior fighter. Gets back to the point that I asked you earlier, Lennox, about can a guy 29 really change that much? Left hand, step back, Cintron. Well, Cintron said he wanted to. Uh throw a lot more punches. I don't see him throwing a lot more punches right now. You know, he needs to be throwing uh, way more punches than he's throwing. Oh, he got caught with a great punch right there. Yeah. I think he's hurt. Centron got tagged Five, right in the head. Six, and that seven, may have been a clash eight, of heads. Nine, ten. Oh, Cintron's claiming yeah. a headbutt. Instead, he was counted out. Well, even if it is a headbutt, Cintron should know to get up to his feet by, say, the count of eight. You know, at least a second or two right. to spare. He did have his gloves off the canvas before the count of ten. Okay, but he shouldn't be ca ca cutting it that close, even if he did think it was a headbutt. Right, right but you have to you, you have to remember the headbutt must have messed him up in some way for him to stay down. So he may have not been aware of the count. If it was a headbutt, we'll see. Right. Be professional. Well, let's take a look at it. Again, here right near the end of the round. No headbutt. Oh, he thought it was a headbutt. No headbutt. Because of how he got hit with that shot, he felt that that guy headbutted him, but it was really a punch. Well, Martinez is good enough that he fooled both the referee and Kermit Cintron at different points of the fight into thinking that his fist was a head. That's pretty good. Yeah, that was a good crunching left hand. Reason why it was crunching because he was coming in on that. Now Cintron is losing his composure in his corner, but once again we take a look right here, the end of the round. Boom! That is a left hand. There is no headbutt, and referee Frank Santori had it right. Oh, 
Well, now the fight is not over. Well, if you complain, if you complain enough, the referee will change his mind. The bell rang. He was up at nine. And he just started talking about a head, but I sent him back to his corner and then hell broke it. But he was up at nine to the fight. I didn't stop the fight. We're listening to the referee explain it now. He says whether or not it was a headbutt, he, he didn't see a headbutt, but he was up at the count of nine, so it therefore is not a stoppage. That's actually correct. The referee actually has it right here. Bill, we're ready. So the fight is going to continue. It is a knockdown. It is a knockdown. We have showed it. The referee right, said, hey, I didn't see any headbutt. Oh, this is the first time I'm going to a boxing match and what, no, it's turned into a hockey match. V very difficult, though, for fighters to, after they think and the adrenaline leaves them because they think the fight is over, to then re-prepare themselves to come out and face each other for another round or more. Well, the referee has to collect the scorecards because then there was all this confusion. This is a two and a half minute break right now and counting in between the rounds. Eighth round. Everybody understand we're going to the eighth round, right? Box. Well, the commission has told us that Cintron was saved by the bell. He cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Well, the, so was, it doesn't matter whether he was or wasn't because he was off his, his hands were no longer on the floor before the count of 10. Right, and that's what the referee said. The referee was right. He was up at nine. So far, the referee has gotten everything right except for the confusion of and ca calling the fight over before it was over. Well, I did miss the cut. <laughs> he, may have, he may have said the round is over, and Citron started with the fight was over. Right. This fight is, is not over. You can see both guys are actually amped up after that right, break, sort right, of ending, right, after that false ending. Well, two minutes break, they want to really mix it up because they're not used to having such a long break. All right, break. Let him go. Let's Remember, go. Remember, it was Cintron who got dropped from a punch, as we showed you. All right, Howard, let's get your opinion on this uh, as to what but, we've but seen. Florida is a very unusual state. At three minutes exactly, they ring the bell. They don't give a darn if the guy's right, on the stop, floor or not. They ring the bell, okay? So, you know, to me, it appeared as though Frankie Santori indicated that the fight was over. I, I mean, I, I thought he, he clearly said that he counted out Cintron. You know, this is when he was counting over Cintron. He didn't recognize any headbutts. He rightly started to count. Cintron was on the floor. And it appeared as though referee Frank Santori said that, you know, this guy took a 10 count. But when the bell rang, I mean, the bell are ringing three minutes. You can't be saved by the bell. All right. Depending on what happens here, uh, at the end of this round, we're going to show you that final 10 seconds of round number seven. And did Cintron get up before that bell rang? It looked to me as though the only things touching the canvas were the soles of Cintron's feet before the count of 10, but just barely. Well, let's see if Cintron can make the most of it. It's, it's an amped up Martinez. Here in round number eight. Let him go, punch way out. Let him but go, punch in Cintron's defense punch here, he had two and a half minutes to recoup Cintron, from a punch that knocked him down stop. at the end of the round. And which he thought was a headbutt. In the which referee's wasn't. estimation, even if he believes now that Cintron beat the count, at the moment that he called the fight over, it did not seem as though he believed that. It seemed as though he thought Cintron, in fact, did not beat the count. We've had cuts that have occurred for a clash of heads. We've had cuts that have occurred from punches. Oh, the clash Martinez of heads. just got hit with something hard and looked like he was shook up. And now this looks like posturing on his part. Good left hand by Martinez. It's the best thing to happen to this fight, Bob. <laughs> confusion. Well, yeah, confusion. They're both fighting harder now. Cintron lands a right. End of round number eight. All right, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring you the end of round number seven. Listen for the bell. Watch.
Well, it wasn't a headbutt, and now, was he really up at 10? You couldn't see from that angle whether his knee had cleared the floor. In real time, I thought I saw his knee off the floor before the actual number 10 was set by the referee, which technically would mean he beat the count. Come on, keep working, working it. Well, we've been joking about instant replay. There was nothing conclusive to overturn that call for that view. <laughs> well, right. The, 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 the ruling with knockdowns, you, you're counted out if anything other than the soles of your feet are touching the canvas at the moment the referee counts 10. So round number nine is underway and what has been a crazy last round and a half, two rounds. Martinez thought the fight was over. Cintron thought he was headbutted, but as you saw with that replay, it was a crunching left hand right to his jaw that right, stop, knocked stop. him down. He got hit so hard he didn't know what hit him. Right? It was a it was a telling blow, and Cintron was coming in at that at that point, which makes Martinez punch a lot stronger, and the effects a lot a lot meaner as well. Cintron caution for a low blow. Cintron was cut along that left eye in round number five. There you go, don't hold him. Break! You no, know, Martinez moving around so much. Every time he throws a punch or moves to one side to the other, Citron has to readjust, and this is what takes a little time. That's why it's important always to be on the balls of your feet, ready to react at any given moment. What do you make about the fact that Martinez in the blue, Lennox, against a right-handed fighter, just keeps going to his left? You know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. It seems to work for him. He's not getting caught with any silly punches, and you know, he's it's, it's, it's being a, he's very effective by by moving that way. Since the apparent ending of this fight, that wasn't really an ending. Since Cintron believed right, he got a second chance and was complaining and felt that he was treated unfairly because he felt he was headbutt, but it, unaware that he in fact was hit by a punch apparently. He has been brought out of his shell and is, is providing stiffer competition since then for Martinez, landing some clean shots to the head. He sticks out a good left hand. Martinez steps in with the left, Cintron able to dip away from most of the danger. And if right you hand by Martinez scored there. Styles are messing up when it comes to the feet because their feet are always stepping on each other or hitting each other. And sometimes you can see on Citron he loses his balance because there's a mix up with the feet. Also keep in mind just because there has not yet been a headbutt, the cut and the knockdown scored by Martinez were by clean punches. Doesn't mean that he might not get one here. Their heads are seemingly getting closer and closer in exchanges. Their feet as Lennox mentioned are getting tangled and headbutts frequently occur in those situations between southpaw and orthodox fighters. And of round number nine. All right. All right, we're going to go back to the end of round seven one more time and try to give you a more definitive look as to whether Cintron got up. There's the left. Canvas to me, just barely, as I said. Listen, I would give him the benefit of the doubt and say it was off. You know, another thing to consider, which it doesn't matter, it's not 10 seconds, it's when the referee says 10. The ref, there was almost a slight hesitation before he said 10. And maybe that gave Cintron the chance to get his knee off, because I thought he did clear his knee before well, the 10 was set. The hesitation was to allow him to get his knee off the ground. Going to Compu Bucks. Power punches through nine. Martinez has outlanded Cintron 69 31. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Lennon. Okay, Bob, I've got an 88 82, seven rounds to two, Sergio Martinez. Bob, I think he just outboxed him for seven rounds in a row. I got to tell you, Kermit Cintron refuses to cut off the ring. I mean, why he wants to just stand there and not take a step to the side is just beyond me. I, I mean, you fight a guy that's circling, you take a step in the direction that he's circling, and you whack him. And Kermit just can't get that straight. 
And Martinez is out boxing him. Seven to two, Martinez. As far as the stoppage goes, I think Santori said 10. I think he took Sintra into the corner as if the fight were over. I mean, in my mind, Santori stopped the fight, and they talked him into letting it go. Yes, but Harold, you thought his knee was off the canvas when he said 10? I, or on the canvas. I that, thought it was just well, barely is, off Max, the canvas. Warren it's the referee's in? call. The referee said 10. His knee might have been off, but weren't his gloves still on the canvas? No, I think his his I think no part of his body except the soles of his feet by a millisecond listen, cleared the canvas by 10. Listen, he just made it. End of story. But they're still fighting, so he he obviously still made it. Crazy sequence in the end of round seven. Cintron shoots a right hand over the top after Martinez just missed with a good left. I break. 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 Watch punching down. Watch punching down. Watch. Left hand by Cintron after Martinez landed a left to the chest of Cintron. Right hand by Cintron, left hand scores by Martinez. You know, the final question about that knockdown, and maybe we'll be able to get the precise moment, is it's not when the referee says the T in 10, it's when he says the end. That's how close it was. <laughs> stop, stop. Last second time, finito, no more. Next time you're across your point. Yeah, Frank said to her, pretty clear right there about holding behind the head. That next time you're getting a point deducted. Was that holding behind the head or hitting behind the head? Kind of made the motion, grabbing behind the head. Might have hit him too. <laughs> Two fouls for the price of one, Lennox. California mission and referee. A couple of fights have been involved in some, you could call them controversial calls, but the bottom line is we're still in the middle of a pretty good fight here. Good round for Kermit Sintron. You understand me? I need two more rounds of that. Okay? If you hurt the guy, when you hurt him, jump on him. Okay? Listen. Keep going behind the jab. He cannot handle your jab. You understand? Yeah. The jab is the key to it. You understand me? Ah. Okay? Come on. You gotta take it. Take it from him. I told you. Press, press, press. Close up. Close up on the defense. Take him and work him. Work him. Work the body. Work the body and then up. Throw. Okay? Good. Work it. Work it. Do you want it? Yes. Come on. Tell me you want it. Tell me you want it. I want it, baby. All right, let's go. Let's get on top of it. Well, Kermit Cintron was certainly economical in his power punches, according to CompuBox in round 10. He landed 11 of his 16. As we begin round number 11, scheduled for 12. In a fight that we thought ended at the end of seven. I heard Ronnie Shields in the corner say he can't handle the jab. And Cintron has had success with the jab when he's used it. Lennox had it pegged in round one. <laughs> Don't punch me in the back. Break. Stop. Break. Don't punch me in the back. Cintron landing another good shot. Right, stop. Stop. Break. Break. They put something together. Well, his punches are appearing a lot sharper. He's really thinking about what he wants to do in there. But as Harold pointed out when he gave us his scorecard, did, did he just give away too many rounds in the middle? Yeah. I believe he did. You know what I mean? Right, stop. Break. Let go. Fewer Martinez did. was really scoring the points. He's still stop. scoring his points. To a referee, it looks like he's scoring the points because he's moving around. Stop. And, stop. you know, he's attempting to throw a lot of punches. E each round is scored as its own fight. And so you have to ask yourself in every round, who would you rather have been in that round? And I think... At least in, in most of the rounds, 
when it's obvious who you'd rather have been, it's the answer Sergio Martinez. So far, you can say between these two guys, Martinez has been the better fighter tonight. So 20 seconds ago, Martinez landed a beautiful left hand right to the bottom. And then has been able to score with a couple of punches since. Martinez had to lift up his right foot just to get around Citron because Citron had his left foot out there blocking his path to go to the right. That time Martinez stood in the pocket with a combination. Martinez has also landed punches regularly enough that sometimes watching him fight against Citron here, you're not. Maybe there's a tendency to not give him credit for all the punches he's landing because you get used to seeing it. And meanwhile, when Cintron lands a clean shot, a rarer occurrence, you might tend to give him more credit. This is where it's dangerous for Martinez. Later, late in the fight, hands down. Doesn't want to take that chance right now. If I was his corner, I would tell him to keep his hands up. His style, though, man. It's... Yeah, I mean, but styles can fail, especially against certain people when you when you don't do the correct thing. Oh, yeah. Martinez that time stepped in the pocket, landed a nice combination, and shot a good left hand. Good round for Martinez in round 11. I need some fun. I need some fun. Come on, let him get some out first, dude. Just let him breathe. Let him breathe. Let him breathe. It's the last round. There ain't no rush now. Listen. Listen. If you want, this fight is so fucking close. You understand me? If you win this fucking round, you're going to win this fight. Okay. You understand me, Last round. Yeah. Ultimo round, Capio. Press him. 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 Keep him guard up. Keep him guard up. Move. 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 So we get set for the start of the 12th and final round. Sergio Martinez and Kermit Cintron in a fight that we thought ended after round seven. It has proceeded to the final round. Let's see if Cintron can follow the advice of his corner and remain busy. So Harold Letterman's scorecard, he has Martinez comfortably in front. Once again, that card is unofficial. Martinez fights with his hands down like this. It's an indication of his confidence. How about that left he just landed? And, and he lands punches like that because he is confident. Uh, at the same time, maybe it is overconfidence in the sense that certainly he's more vulnerable defensively with his hands at his side. Glad to be joined us for HBO's Boxing After Dark from Sunrise, Florida. Bob Pop, Max Kellerman, Lennox Lewis. 12th and final round for Sergio Martinez and Kermit Cintron. Coming up in the main event, Nate Campbell against Ali. When he got, and now a point being deducted I disagree for Martinez. with that totally. I disagree with that totally because Citron actually put his head down for that shot. If you had to count the number of times each fighter initiated a clinch, I'd be willing to bet that Cintron has in fact initiated more clinches. See, like right there, he, he, he puts his left arm around Martinez, then Martinez is initiated. So if this fight is a little bit closer than we think it is, that could be huge. When one guy is cut from a punch, he's also dropped from a punch. No, that's a slip. He's been outboxed in the majority of rounds. Landed, it seems, two to one. Uh, it'd be pretty tough to say that Cintron won this fight unless he had a miraculous 12th round, a knockdown. Cintron is holding in this round when he should never hold in this round. He should be throwing punches trying to take his opponent out. And Martinez is feeling good. He's feeling real good. He's still jumping around. This is the last round. And he's showing the judges that he really wants this and that he's, that he's winning the round. 
Martinez hit Cintron again in the back of the head, but that in the back of the neck, but that's because Cintron was bent all the way forward. Yeah, it's not Martinez's intention to hit him there. It's Cintron's defensive posture that's resulting in his getting hit there. Again, he dips his head and ducks it low. Cintron hasn't thrown any punches. I think he's winding up for a right hand. There it is. Usually when you wind up for a punch like that, it's never there. Martinez is showing something here because in a fight, in a weird kind of fight where Cintron has stolen some rounds, Cintron Martinez is closing the show in style. He's been much busier than Cintron here in this final round, according to the copy box numbers. Landed some pretty good shots. Takes a glancing left as he works his way in. And if you look at Martinez's face, I mean, he's saving his face for his modeling contracts, obviously, because he's, he's not getting hit. Now there's the bell to end it in what was a bizarre 12 rounds for Sergio Martinez and Kermit Cintron. Remember, Cintron, at the, in the last round, Martinez had a point deducted. That could be huge. I mean, it, it, it could be, but it shouldn't be. Martinez won the fight. We'll see what the official verdict is. Remember, too, in round number seven, a left hand at the end of the round by Martinez dropped Cintron. In round 12, Martinez outlanded Cintron, according to CompuBox, 21 to 7. 21 of 69 to Cintron, 7 of 41. Kermit doing his victory dance. All right, let's take a look at some of the crazy aspects of this fight. We'll start in round number five. Now, this was ruled a clash of heads, but watch the punch right there opening up the cut on Cintron's left eye. You can clearly see it was a punch. It was ruled a clash of heads. End of round number seven. A left hand. Now, Cintron thinks it was from a headbutt. Clearly, it was from a left hand. Did he get up? Cintron saying he's hit a headbutt. Martinez thought he was a winner. Take a look at it one more time. It was a great left hand that Cintron thought was a headbutt. Five, Let's listen six, again to the count. Seven, eight, nine. He, he, had, he had not said ten yet, and it ten. looks like there's space between the knee and the, and the canvas. Yeah, the he, bell rang. He made it. He made it. The bell rang. Whether or not you can be saved by the bell, though, it appears that Cintron just barely beat the count. Stop! Stop! Then hitting behind the head in the last round, Martinez loses yeah. a point. Now, he's been cautioned yeah. for that before, but Lennox, it was because of Cintron. Right. Cintron put, it, put his head down and got hit behind the head, and the referee felt that, you know, he did it on purpose. Well, he didn't do it on purpose. Okay. Let's see how the judges have this scored. Here is Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Tommy Kazmarek scores it. 116, 110 for Martinez. Peter Trimatera and Jed O'Connor both scored the same. 113, 113. The bout is a draw by majority verdict. Majority draw. Well, the point deduction turned out to be the difference for Sergio Martinez. We thought that he clearly won the fight. He loses a point in the 12th and final round, and that costs him a victory. Martinez was not intentionally hitting behind the head. It was Cintron initiating most of the holding. It was an absurd deduction. It was Martinez who won the majority of the rounds, who outlanded Cintron almost two to one, who cut him with a clean punch, who knocked him down with a clean punch, and who pretty clearly won this fight and was robbed of maybe a knockout, depending on how you see the seventh round, and certainly a decision by a silly point deduction. And by the way, not the best scoring in the world by the judges either. Yeah, for it to be that close, uh, kind of bizarre because in those middle rounds, you take a look at rounds three, four, five, six, and seven where he got dropped and Cintron did absolutely nothing. Let's take a look at the final numbers as compiled by CompuBox and the final punch stats for Martinez and Cintron. 
over this 12 round fight. And uh, as we look into these numbers for the fight, you'll take a look at total punches. Neither guy had a blistering pace. You can see that Martinez outlanded Cintron in this fight by 48 punches, and he was slightly busier. Well, he outlanded him for every punch that Martin that Cintron landed. Martinez landed a punch and a half. So a controversial draw. The power punches. You take a look at again. Martinez a little bit more accurate. He landed more. 46 more. He scored a knockdown. And objectively, we have evidence that Martinez also landed the harder punches, not just that they count as power punches, but that his punches produced a cut and produced a knockdown. Bizarre, bizarre, bizarre finish in the 12 round bout between Sergio Martinez and Kermit Cintron here on HBO's Boxing After Dark. From Sunrise, Florida, 